So far, we've looked at the graphs and characteristics of the sine graph. Here's our beautiful little wave. We've also looked at the cosine graph. And there we go again, another little wave, uh, just kind of shifted over a little. Um, in this video, we're going to look at the special characteristics of the tangent function. While the sine and cosine have many similar characteristics, the graph of the tangent looks very different. What is it that makes the tangent so different? Well, we can see why by considering the definition of the tangent function. When we first introduced the tangent function, we defined it as the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. This means that unlike the sine and cosine functions, the tangent function has a fraction in it. Because we end up with a variable in the denominator, we have some serious potential for trouble spots. Because any time that a denominator can be equal to zero, we have mathematical mayhem. Our tangent function would be undefined at those locations. In your previous pre-calculus class, you might recall graphing rational functions. And rational functions always end up with vertical asymptotes at the places where the denominator would be, end up being zero. Technically, the tangent function is a rational function, and we need to worry about those asymptotes. So where do those asymptotes happen? Well, anywhere that the den denominator would be zero. That means we need to think about where the cosine of x is equal to zero. So let's add uh, the cosine of x to our graph over here. Cosine of x. And see how these two functions are related. Notice that everywhere that our cosine graph crosses the x-axis, we have a vertical asymptote. There, here, cosine crosses the x-axis, vertical asymptote. Here, cosine function crosses the x-axis, vertical asymptote. Here, cosine crosses the x-axis, vertical asymptote. So where the cosine is equal to zero are gonna be restrictions for the domain of the tangent function because it's not defined there. The domain for the tangent uh, is going to be all real numbers except where the cosine is equal to zero. More specifically, the domain is going to be all real numbers except pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is an integer. Notice that this pi over 2 plus pi k is the same as what we define the x-intercepts of the cosine function to be. Okay, so that tells us about the domain of uh, the tangent function. Well, what about its range? Well, notice everywhere uh, that the y goes off the the y values go off the chart, both towards positive infinity and towards negative infinity, and every value in between gets covered. So the tangent function actually has a range of all real numbers. This is quite different than that of the sine and cosine graphs, which only could get values between negative and one, negative one and one. Why is that? Again, it comes from the concept of dividing fractions. Um, when we divide by very small numbers, we end up with very large numbers. Think of like 1 over 0 0.0001 ends up being 10,000, and that only gets bigger. So when we divide by... Uh, by very small numbers, we get very large numbers. And since cosine takes on lots of those small fractional values, we end up with some really big values in the tangent when we divide. The next major characteristic that we need to address here is the period of the tangent function. The tangent is definitely a periodic function. That is, it repeats at regular intervals. 
Um, notice, however, that in the same amount of time that the sine or cosine graph does one full cycle, our tangent goes through two full waves. So here, see the cosine starts here, down, and back up, that's 2 pi. The tangent goes up to infinity, does this full wave down and up to infinity, and then back up this way. So the period or repetition of a full cycle of the tangent is half of that of the sine or cosine, which means that the period of the tangent is just pi, not 2 pi. The last characteristic of the tangent function we need to address then is the intercept behavior of the graph. First, notice that the tangent goes through the origin. Here, let's clear off the cosine now, make it easier for us to look at. The tangent goes through the origin right here. That means our y-intercept is zero. But we have lots of x it, we have lots of x intercepts, the origin, of course, but lots of others. Notice that at the origin we start, we go up to infinity at pi over two. Then after pi over two, our function comes back from negative infinity up and ends its full cycle back at the x-axis when we get to pi. And then we can do that all over again. From the origin we go up disappear down to the bottom of the axis and come back up this way. So our horizontal intercepts can be described at occurring at k times pi zero. Again, where k is an integer. In the next video, we're going to talk about doing shift and transformations of the tangent graph. I have a hard time thinking about the repeating pattern of the tangent with a huge break asymptote in the middle. So I don't like to think of it as starting at the origin, up, break, starting at the bottom, up to the origin, and stop. I like to think of the graph as these big continuous sections that have breaks in between them. So what does that mean for us? Uh, when I uh, think back for a moment to how you would draw the sine or the cosine. When I draw the sine or the cosine, I think about, I'm going to start at the origin, do what it does, and follow a full cycle till I get to 2 pi. When I think about drawing the, the um, tangent, what I think of is that I have a beautiful wave and this kind of that flat center spot goes right through the origin. I missed it. There we go. Try that again. So I think of this as a single wave from negative infinity to positive infinity that occurs when x is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, because that's where our asymptotes are, making sure the graph goes through the origin. Then I can create other waves from there. There's my next one, um, going th through there at pi, through, through the x-axis at pi. And then with our next asymptote showing up at the next pi at 3 pi over 2. And of course, we can do more this way as well. This is an important difference when you get into doing shifts and transformations of the tangent graphs. Think of it as going through the origin, um, but that's the middle of the wave. So we kind of go from the negative pi over 2 area to the positive pi over 2 area when we're starting our, period, our single period graph.